in this video, we will be evaluating expressions and graphing. Notice the table at the top of the screen. There are headings going across the top. It starts with the independent variable, the algebraic expression, followed by the dependent variable and ordered pair. What happens is the next line below, we are given some information. We are given an independent variable. And what an independent variable, in this case x, what that means is that it does not depend on anything else. It does whatever it wants. It doesn't change based on what something else does. It does whatever it was supposed to or meant to do. And so that x is the independent variable. In this case, the algebraic expression is 5x, which also means 5 times x. The dependent variable is y. And the ordered pair is made up of the dependent variable and the independent variable. Excuse me, I said that backwards. The independent variable and the dependent variable, the x and the y. What we're now going to do is we're going to take the independent variable, which is x. And everything in this column below the x represents a different independent variable. We're going to take the value, in this case we're going to take the value of the 2, and we're going to plug it into the algebraic expression 5x. So the 2 is actually going to replace the x. So instead of 5x, we now have 5 times 2. Well, 5 times 2 gives us a product of 10, which means y ends up being 10. Now, the reason y is a dependent variable is because the value of y depends on the independent variable, what we end up at with as a product, 5 times 2. So, unless we know what the independent variable is, in this case 2, we will never know what the dependent variable stands for. Now, since we've worked through this table, and let me clean this table up a little bit. Since we've worked through the table, we have now figured out for this column, we have an x, which is 2, and a y, which is 10. So I'm going to take those two numbers, and I'm going to put them in an ordered pair over here at the end. The x, in this case, was 2. The y was 10. So now I have an ordered pair to 10. Now if I come down at the bottom to this graph, I can graph that ordered pair to 10. First, the x value is what I go across to the right. I go across to 2. Then I'm going to go to the 10 on my y-axis. So that means I'm going to go up to 10. Where that point is, I will put a dot and that will represent 210. Now we're not actually going to draw these lines that I had on here. Those were just to show you the movement. Normally we just put the point there. Okay, I've gone ahead and filled out the rest of the table for us. Notice that for each row I took the independent variable and plugged it into the algebraic expression which gave me the value of the dependent variable, which allowed me to then write the ordered pair for that row. Now I can complete my graph. I can put the rest of the points on my graph now that I have the ordered pairs for 20 and 630. So I'm going to go ahead and plot 420, go across to 4, go up to 20, and put a point. I'm then going to go across, go back to the origin, I'm sorry, go back to the origin. I'm going to go across to 6, go up to 30, and put another point. Now that's the final point that I need, and now we just need to connect our dots. So we're going to take a blue line, we're going to make it nice and skinny, and we're going to start at the highest point 
And we're going to draw a straight line through all of them. That's not quite straight. Let me straighten it up just a little bit. It'll look something like that. And so now that algebraic expression 5x is actually represented in this graph. So the expression 5x is shown with this line. This line represents 5x. We're going to move on to another example. In this case, the algebraic expression is x divided by 9. So I'm going to start with 18 divided by 9. And that gives me a dependent variable of 2. So my ordered pair is 18, 2 in parentheses. Next, I'm going to go to 36 as my independent variable. That produces 36 divided by 9, which is 4 giving me the ordered pair 36, 4. And finally, I'm going to go to the independent variable 54 and use it in the algebraic expression. 54 divided by 9 gives me 6. The ordered pair turns into 54 and 6. Now it's time to graph. So I'm going to grab my blue marker again, and I'm going to graph 18, 2. It means I go across to 18, I go up to 2, and I put a point there. I'm then going to go across to 36, go up to 4, and I'm going to put a point there. Finally, I'm going to go across to 54, go up to 6, put a point there, and I'm going to finish this off by drawing a blue line, a nice skinny blue line from all of those points. Notice that the line goes through the origin. That's important for us to notice. Remember, the origin is right here at the corner, which is the ordered pair 0, 0. Now we're going to go through one more example. This is the final example. Notice that the algebraic expression has become a little bit more complicated. The independent variable, the first one we're going to use, is 3. So what it's going to turn into is 3 squared minus 5. Now I've got to follow the order of operations to uh, evaluate this numerical expression, 3 squared minus 5. I have to take care of my exponent first, so 3 squared becomes a 9. 9 minus 5 is 4, which gives me the ordered pair 3, 4. Next, I'm going to use the independent variable of 4. It'll turn into 4 squared minus 5. 4 squared is 16 minus 5 is 11. Gives me an ordered pair, 4, 11. And finally, I've got the independent variable 5, and I'm going to plug that in for x which gives me 5 squared minus 5. We know that 5 squared is 25 minus 5 is 20, so I have an ordered pair of 5, 20. Time to graph. The first point is 3, 4. Go across 3, go up to the 4. The next point is 4, 11. I'm going to go across to the 4. I'm going to go up to 11. If you notice on the scale over here on the left side, going up and down, I'm counting by 2's. So I don't see 11 on the scale. That means I need to go halfway between 10 and 12, which is where 11 would be. Finally, I need to put the point 5, 20, go across to 5, go up to 20, and there is my point. The last step is to connect these with a blue line. When I draw a straight line through all three of these points, I want you to notice that the line does not go through the origin. That'll be interesting for us to see as we get a little deeper into our study of graphing expressions.